Hey guys, Jen here from Bent Yoga, and we are in the middle of going through the Niyamas. Now the Niyamas are the second step in the Eight Limb Path of Yoga, and the Niyamas are kind of how you interact with yourself. They're laws or self-disciplines meant to give you a more positive relationship with yourself. And you need to kind of work through these Niyamas, there's five of them, before you can move, progress into the postures and the breathing and all of the stuff that comes later on in this eight limb path of yoga. And the reason is, is that these niyamas teach you who you are, okay? The first one is the cleanliness, saucha, and purity. It's all about watching what you put into your body and what you allow to reside inside of you. There's the santosha, being content where you are, not placing your happiness on something in the future that may or may not happen. There's your tapas, which is that inner fire, that, that motivation to keep exploring and playing and growing. And then that leads us to the one that we're talking about today, which is the svadhyaya. Now, svadhyaya is all about self-study. Now, in reality, this svadhyaya is actually present in all of the yamas and the niyamas because it's all about learning about yourself so even in the yamas when we were talking about um you know uh satya truth truthfulness you had to sit back and observe yourself if you were being honest with yourself before you could be honest with others so this self-study is really present in all of the yamas and the niyamas and pretty much every stage A couple things about this svadhyaya. One is that you are not your thoughts. So simply observing your thoughts isn't going to be as comprehensive of a picture of you as observing your reactions to your thoughts. There's a difference there. If you observe your thoughts, it's one thing. Observing how you react to your thoughts is going to open up a whole bunch more knowledge for you on yourself. For example, this self-study, it can help you to understand your passions. It can help you to understand what motivates you, what demotivates you. If somebody talks to you this way, does it put a light of fire under you or do you give up? If somebody talks to you that way, what about that? Sitting back and watching how you react to your thoughts, that's key. That's key. Because that's how you can start to change the reaction. The thoughts may or may not change. The external world may or may not change. But how you react to it, that's what you need to figure out. If you don't know where you're starting from, if you don't know what rubs you the wrong way, if you don't know what triggers you to do this or to do that or to do that, how can you steer yourself? along this path. You have to figure out what motivates you, what inspires you. Use more of that. You have to learn what demotivates you, right? What depresses you, what, what takes you down a notch, and stay away from that stuff. So we sit back and we watch our thoughts, and that's going to teach us a little bit more about ourselves than if we just sat and watched what thoughts popped into our head. Now, this... This one came into play, gosh, maybe it was about 10 years ago or so. And I remember that it was the first time I had that light bulb moment that yoga is more about practicing for the real world than escaping from the real world for an hour. A lot of times people think yoga is, you know what, I am stressed, I'm going to go in this room and be soft and quiet and beautiful and blah, 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 blah for an hour, and I'm going to escape my real life. And I kind of I kind of maybe thought that too. So yeah, it must have been longer than that ago, more, more probably like about 20 years ago or so, because it was right when I was first getting into yoga. And I was in chair pose, and I... The teacher kept, you know, get lower, get lower, blah, 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 whatever. And something, maybe the sixth time she said it, I finally heard it. I finally heard her asking me to get deeper in the, into this posture. And I remember, you're probably not going to be able to see me, but I remember I was about here in this chair pose, 
and all of a sudden, I went low. And you want to know what I realized? I realized I was half-assing that posture. I didn't know it until that moment. I wasn't doing it consciously. I wasn't doing it on purpose. But what I realized in that moment is I was half-assing everything in my life. There's a saying, how you do anything is how you do everything. And oh my gosh, was it the truth. I was kind of tired of my job. I was half-assing my job. And relationships, the dating scene, all that, I wasn't putting a lot of effort in. In fact, there was nothing in my life I was putting effort in. I was just kind of blah, going through my days. And that silly chair pose is the thing that snapped me out of it. That when I noticed, when I stepped back and I watched how I was reacting to that posture, and my reaction was zilch effort, it woke me up that that's how I was living my life. You can learn so much by watching how you do postures on your mat. Do you take a break? Not only do you take a break, do you take a break when you need one or when you want one? Do you go deeper? Do you go deeper when you need to or when you want to? Ego. When you figure out all of this stuff on your mat, it's amazing how it translates out into that world. How you do anything is how you do everything. So this self-study, this svedyaya, is so important for us to take a moment to watch ourselves. Because we can't change, we can't grow, we can't advance if we don't know where we're starting from. If we don't realize we're half-assing, how are we going to ever break out of that to make change happen so that we're not? We can't. We have to know where we start from. We have to know where we're at. We have to meet ourselves in this moment before we can make change happen. And we can't meet ourselves in this moment if we're not aware of this moment. So take a moment throughout your week to check in. How are you reacting when the boss gives you something to do? How are you reacting with your kids? How are you reacting to what your spouse says? See if you can step outside that reaction and just observe it. And then reflect a little bit upon what was it that triggered me to do this? Which part of it? Was it the tone of voice? Was it the words used? Start to notice and reflect upon what parts actually meant something to you. What inspired you? What made you want to go out and save the world after watching something? This self-reflection, this svedyaya is so important.